taggers and tagettes, and thank you for joining us on yet another exciting episode of the Graffiti News Network, Chicago's only underground news program that brings you the latest word on Chicago's most happening art scene. Today is February the 21st, 2011, and boy, we got a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Well, it was bound to happen, and it finally did. Rod Blagojevich, our most hilarious politician, has finally faded from the public consciousness. Gone also, it would seem, as any interest in the street stencils of the man with so much hair. Well, other than the Chicago Police Department, that is, who arrested the stencils creator, Mr. Crow, not long ago. Well, that's what happens when you open a Flickr account under your street name with links back to your website. Well, good luck in prison. Maybe you can share a cell with Blago. Wouldn't that be ironic? But don't worry, if you still love street stencils, there's a whole new breed roaming the streets of Chicago, searching for the brains of graffiti artists. Surprise, surprise, they haven't found any yet. That's right, zombie stencils are out and about and they mean business. Even taking our own celebrities and turning them against us. Could Owen Wilson be next? His career is already dead, isn't it? One of the great Chicago traditions is seeing who can really tear it up during a snowstorm. These past few months it's been people like Wicked and Scan who have left their mark during the blizzards. Of course Snacky, Big L, and Notif have done their fair share of damage as well, as has this guy, whose name I cannot pronounce. Is it Beamer? Is it Bomber? I sure hope it doesn't stand for Bummer, that'd be a total, uh, well, you know. And while we're on the topic of names I can't pronounce, what about this guy? That's a lot of letters in there, mister, and I know at least a few of them are silent, so why not give your hand a rest, huh? Of course, according to local reports, he has been good enough to get into KWT to an R crew, so what the fuck do I know? Of course, besides vandals working through the snowstorms that put graffiti blasters on winter break, there is another great Chicago tradition. That's right, I'm talking about putting shit in the street to save your parking space. An endless source of amusement and frustration for all of the Chicago populace. This year, someone really upped the ante by putting a burned out van in the street to save their parking space. Hey, uh, is that artillery street career in there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, buddy. I know you also secretly go by whatever the fuck this says. And I know you also secretly do whatever the fuck this is. Keep up the killer work. Now let me apologize, boys and girls, if I sound a bit jaded and cynical. That isn't our intention here at the Graffiti News Network. I mean, there's a reason I don't let Swiv on the program, because I want the vibe to be positive and encouraging. So let's talk about some of the more elevated artwork in the Chicago graffiti scene. That's right, I'm talking rooftops. You know, I've been wondering who was going to be next to get this Logan Square favorite spot, and guess what? It was next. Also up and around was No Teeth, Hertz, and a slew of others. But I'd have to say my vote for favorite rooftops recently has got to go to live. Or is it live? Fucking English language. Anyway, great colors, great spots, great form, great everything, top notch work, very impressive. But Billy, I can hear some of you complaining already. Rooftops are easy. Who's keeping it real on the streets? Well, I'm glad you asked. Old pros like Levy, Rad, and Fact have been out and about just as they have for years. X-Men and D30 crews still the most dominant in Chicago, in my humble opinion. But if you're tired of hand styles, don't worry, there are still a few people piecing in the snow. Mega rocked this wall not too long ago. And my boy Onion came out of retirement to fill a few bubbles, even throwing up our old friend Soul. Long live Soul. Of course, then you have things like this, which isn't bad, and also things like this, which is much worse. Trust me, buddy, no one ordered fries with that, okay? Maybe you should join Crybaby's crew and learn a thing or two. And now while we're on the topic of scribbling messes, let's talk about Chicago's most endearing graph war, DCM versus JK. In a neck and neck race not to be last place of all Chicago crews, this war has been raging for years. Fatigue and boredom have overtaken most of the members, and it seems that only Psycho and ICU are left. Hey Buckley, who do you think will win? Well, I don't know, Billy. That one guy psycho sure seems crazy. Of course, I see you. Get and see us. Whoa. Yes, we're all anxious to see how that pans out over the next few years. And while we're speaking of things that no one really cares about, can you believe people are still arguing about this? Okay, yes, Banksy is a legend, and yes, his stencils are clever, and yes, it was great that he honored our city by defacing part of it. But were you really surprised when someone else defaced the same wall? I'm surprised it took so long. Besides, I can think of more than one artist in Chicago that can do better than a single baby stroller stencil. Shit, no one go up on this wall, it might be another mediocre Banksy. Was his half-assed attempt intended to offend both people who hate graffiti as well as people who love graffiti? If you want to offend somebody, just go by a name like this. 
Yes, the rapist has been seen around town, and I'm not talking about the Steelers quarterback. Hello! Hello! At first I thought it was just R. Kelly going under a different name. You know, sex charges and all. Okay, okay, so he only peed on those girls, and if he was able to get his pants down fast enough to hit them, all while holding a camera, I'm guessing they were asking for it. Another clue to the rapist R. Kelly conspiracy theory is the little added P. Get it? Added P? That's right, is this the rapist or the rapist? Is he a raper or a rapper? Think about it. While we're on the topic of getting raped and pissed on, how about that last mayoral election we just had? No, I'm not talking about the mayor for the whole city, I'm talking about the mayor of all street art. For the last few years it's been quite a heated battle, but this last round was even more intense than ever. Would it be Kodo? Would it be Swiv? Kodo? Swiv? Kodo believes in revolution, which I like, but Swiv was picking up lots of support through the street art community. In the end, it was Kodo's own deep political stances that ended up costing him the race. This is street art for God's sake. People don't want to have political opinions or think about things. Just make pretty pictures and put them out there for the world to see. Congratulations to our next mayor, Dr. Swivel Your Hips. We expect you to start skimming money from somewhere by the end of the month. And finally, my dear toads and sprockets, there's just one last issue I'd like to talk about today. You see, like many of you at home, I spend my online time either masturbating or looking at Flickr.com. It seems like recently a lot of people have been locking their photos on Flickr, you know, putting that weird spaceball effect on it that I don't entirely understand. It makes it sort of impossible to just copy it and paste it onto my hard drive like I have for so many years. You know, you might not realize this, but that really pisses me off. Great photographers and documentarians such as Billy Dans, Kodo, and MN the Fucko have been doing this. Even Sorrow does it, his photos suck, and besides he steals them from other people anyway, so what gives him the right? Listen assholes, guess what I do? I just do a screenshot, I paste it into a paint program, I edit it for like 30 seconds, and then I stole your photo anyway. And on top of that, now I hate you. Why can't you be more like There's No Way Home, who isn't smart enough to know how to lock his photos? His photos are so easy to steal as if they were my own. I do it all the time and that's why he and I are best friends. So why don't you cut me a break and just put up the photos? I mean, it's not like you're gonna make money off them, right? Thank you.